What's what up, Next Gen up? fam? We are coming at you live. We're in Lake Tahoe right now, trying to work on some pretty sexy business deals for the Next Gen fam, giving you the resources you need. We can't tell you anything about it just yet, but it's going to be hype. It's going to be sick, and we're just fired up to be here. Good morning, good afternoon, wherever you're tuning in from. It is a 9 a.m. live for, for Justin and myself. This is maybe the earliest live we've ever had. But don't you worry. We're bringing the heat. <laughs> We're ready We're to go. We're good. ready to go. We woke up this morning ready to jam because our guest today, he's a legend. Unreal, man. But we can't get there yet. We can't. We got to let the, let the hype build. Somebody let made this build. possible. I mean, look, we're just two ordinary guys talking to an absolute legend today. I mean, yeah, we work really hard, but there is an organization who has – to next – who do we got? <laughs> Dylan, who is the organization that has made this all possible? Team, you got a credit card out there, right? You might have one called American Express. We got it right here. American Express, they are hosting an incredible event for you. It's called Summit for Success coming at you this Tuesday. One, two, what is that, like five, five days? Guys, let five me days? say this. Shaquille O'Neal, Venus Williams, Next Gen HQ, American Express, Nuff said. Lock it in. Nuff if said. If you are looking to connect with fellow entrepreneurs, fellow business owners, get some education, inspiration, and all the Next Gen momentum, yeah. we'll see you on Tuesday. We're coming at you the whole day, so check the link in the comments. We got what you need. Absolutely free for Next Geners, and you email us a confirmation that you're coming. We'll enter you into a five hundred dollar giveaway. It's insane. It's I, I'm trying to win that so we can have a yeah, great time in Tahoe. Won. We've already won. All right, already won. So American Express, we're super thankful for making this all possible. Thank you to them. Should, how do we get the hype building for the absolute legend we have joining us today? All right, so team, we got to let you in on the video because this morning at you know four in the morning, two a.m. Justin and I on this TV right there that you guys can see, we put the video up. And then we jumped, literally <laughs> jumped out of bed. So rock. let's cue this video. Let's get our guest a little hype building for him. If there's a 1% chance of success, I am that 1%. Wish I had the brains to draft Marcus Colston. That's about the best way I can sum it up. If you look at my, my story and, and how I got to this point, I'm not supposed to be here. Marcus. Marcus. I, oh, my um, goodness. We yeah, couldn't, I had to cut it short. <laughs> that video is insane. It's insane. We literally, 2 a.m., are watching this video live because uh, there's so much we have to get in. So should we? who is this guy? Team, if you caught that video, then you know our guest, Marcus Colston. He is the founder of Marcus Colston Enterprises. He's an advisory committee member for NFL Players, Inc. He is a 10-year NFL veteran. He won a Super Bowl. He he won me a fantasy championship like many times. Of those years. Many times. He is actually the coolest guy. He's an investor. He's an educator. We are so honored to bring Marcus Colson on stage. Marcus, get up here, man. <laughs> oh, good, good to see you guys, man. Happy Thursday. And I, I appreciate it, man. You you got to leave with that that fantasy football championship, man. Always <laughs> there. No question. <laughs> we really appreciate you being here with us. We want to take it back because something that we hear about in your videos, hear about in your talks, is this irrational confidence that you talk about. Mm -hmm. Were you always that kid who had that irrational confidence? Where did you start to develop it? Where did you even learn? Because that's a mindset a lot of entrepreneurs we work with don't have. And we're trying to give that to them. So talk to us about where that started for you in your career. Yeah, I mean, for me, it, it was always this belief that um, even from when I started playing football at age seven, that I, I was going to play in the NFL. And, you know, at, at some point um, it, it shifts from from being a dream to becoming a goal. And and for me, that time frame was right around high school. And um, if you know anything about my story, I wasn't really a very highly recruited player coming out of high school, um, ended up going to a really small school. And, you know, that belief always in the, in, in the back of my mind um, that, that I, I would be able to get to to this goal. I would be able to play and sustain success for for um, for a decade. Um, that wasn't really by accident. And, you know, the ir irrational confidence piece is that um, I had always been confident, not just in my abilities, but my 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 willingness and my, my wanting to work hard and always continue to, to self-improve. And, um, you know, that goal always made sense to me. Now, it, it may it may have looked crazy to other people around me. And that's kind of the irrational piece. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the 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 belief is always backed up by by continuing to work, continuing to find ways to get better. And, um, you know, that's that's kind of been the story of my career, you know, through football and even post football. 
Marcus, that is absolutely incredible. You got two former athletes over here who clearly could not hang with you back in the day, Marcus. But I want to pull on that thread when you achieved this now goal, right? It was a dream. It became a goal. You make the NFL. The stats on the number of high school athletes who end up making professionals, it's literally negative. It's insane. Mm -hmm. So you didn't just say, oh, I made it. You know, check the box. Let's go have fun and a party. You ended up grinding it out 10 years, a Super Bowl. You're one of the best receivers in the NFL for your height of your career. What was getting you out of bed to still continue to get better even when you already made it to the highest level? No, no, that's a really interesting point. Um, and, and for me, it was never it was never about just getting there. Um, for me, it was about getting there and performing at the highest level. Um, and, you know, when you when you're able to to really tap into that that side of you that always is finding ways to be the best version of yourself, um, that's kind of that motivating piece to where you 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 look in the mirror and that's what gets you going. It, it has nothing to do with anything external. Um, so for me, um, you know, getting there as a rookie and, and having success, you know, finishing the runner up for the rookie of the year. It's all well and good, but I still hadn't accomplished the things that I wanted to accomplish. So um, it's, it's you know, really the ability to set goals, but set progressive goals to where as you achieve, you're always hunting down the next one. Um, that's the thing that always has, has kept me going. And um, ultimately, it's the thing that, that drives me in business today. Um, it, it's, you know, you get to a place and you, you kind of establish yourself in one vein. Um, but I'm not really looking for outside validation. I'm always continuing to drive forward and, and really achieve the things that, that I want to achieve. You're staying in your own lane every single day, thinking about how you can get better competing against yourself. I know that is really resonating with a lot in the comments. Rachel, Franzi and Liana, new to ne the Next Gen HQ fam and community. Dan, they're resonating with this idea of 1% better every single day competing against yourself. But Marcus, you make the NFL, you're looking around, you have a lot of big names, you have a lot of personalities. Uh, you know, Dylan and I, we go to meetings all the time and sometimes we have that imposter syndrome of, are we really supposed to be here? Did somebody make a freaking mistake that we are in this room right now? Even mm -hmm. some talking to you right now, I'm like, are you kidding me? This is, this is a guy we look up to so much. Did you ever have any of that in the beginning of your career? Like, oh my goodness, I'm, am I not supposed to be there? Any fear of working with those other guys or was that irrational confidence able to kind of keep you pushing forward? Yeah, it's, it's a delicate balance um, because you 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 have to. Um, for me, it, it starts with self awareness, right? Um, when you get into those situations that that you dreamed about, that you've worked and, and prepared for, you've got to be able to enjoy them, but at the same time, be able to to kind of keep, stay focused on the task at hand. So, um, you know, for me, you know, walking into a locker room and, and getting drafted, you know, in the same class as a Reggie Bush, who is is somebody that you know, um, probably one of the best college players ever. You watch him on Saturdays and then you play him with him on Sundays. Um, it's it's OK to enjoy those moments as long as you can continue to to, um, you know, focus on the task at hand. And it, and it never really gets you off kilter or off track. Um, and again, it's, it's as you as you grow, um, you have to always there, there's a part that you have to continue the, the grind of getting better at the craft, but there's an also there's also this part of, of your personal development that has to continue to um, you have to continue to develop develop that as well, um, because as you walk into these situations, you have to personally be ready and personally feel like you belong there. And, you know, that's that's just as much of the battle as as actually being prepared and being um, having your skills sharp enough to, to be in the rooms. Amen. It's a mind game. Marcus, 100%. Justin, just a mind game. That's exactly it. Rachel here saying self-awareness is everything, right? That is the first step. And then what you do with that, I think, can really make or break your success, your goal, your dream. Marcus, I want to go back to when you were now in the league. You're succeeding. You're growing 1% every day. There's a lot of people in your ear telling you that, oh, you're not good enough. Or, oh, that guy, Marcus Colson, he's, yeah, he's, he's a B. We as entrepreneurs, we get it all the time. We like to call them haters. Today, <laughs> Twitter exists. Twitter was back there. It wasn't maybe quite as big in your heyday. What were you saying to yourself to ignore and put these these voices, these naysayers aside to focus on what you knew you had to do? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, they, they become the fuel for me. Um, they always have become the fuel. Um, you know, if, if, you, if you don't have people doubting what you can do, um, then... I would urge you to do something that's a bit more ambitious um, because 
I mean, I say this all the time. If, if, if it was for everybody, everybody would do it. Right. Um, so it, again, to me, it kind of leans back on that self-awareness, um, always understanding where you're at, um, never being complacent about where you're at, always looking to improve. And if you work hard enough and you and you grind it out, um, the haters, you, you don't really your, your goal is never to prove them wrong. You, they kind of get proven wrong in the process of proving yourself right, um, because that work that you put in that that investment into yourself um, that's ultimately what, what this thing is about. And, and if, if your goal is to prove yourself right, you know, by default, the, 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 the people that, uh, the naysayers and the people that, that really didn't believe that you could achieve, um, you know, they kind of eat their crow in the process. hundred percent. So many in the audience Love are going that. off right now because it's, you focus on yourself. If it was easy, everybody would do it mm -hmm. and you're going to prove yourself right instead of focusing on them, but using them as, as that fuel. And so we were, you know, on before stage, so many in our team, we were talking about that Saints team. I think everybody in fantasy was like on that Saints <laughs> team. Of 10 years, I feel like it was a, it was the craziest Saints team for fantasy every single year. I want to talk about the culture of what that locker room was like of your relationship with players, because at next gen HQ, we got some big players on our team and we're looking to empower our team. Shout out Andrew and Dan who are here in Tahoe with us trying to work on these big deals. Rachel, Matt, everybody in the comments we have big players who are trying to do great things what what is the locker room like in that culture of how you work together you have shared goals you're going for that super bowl ultimately you get that super bowl but are you like fueling each other talk to us about what that locker room was like no you, you hit you hit the nail on the head i mean it was a situation where um i think everyone the thing that made us really successful is that everyone understood their role everyone understood exactly what it was that they brought to the table um whether you were the, the first person on the roster or the, the last practice squad player on the roster, everybody understood how they contributed to the success of the team. And success meant winning a championship. Success wasn't necessarily playing time. Success wasn't, you know, winning a game or a playoff game. Success was defined very early and it was winning a championship. Um, so everyone kind of understood their role going in and their roles, roles evolved over time. And, you know, as, as you're, you know, going through the course of a season or really anything over any length of time, um, those roles tend to evolve and change a bit. But I, I think that even the, the, the piece that's even a little bit more important than that is everyone in the team and everyone in the organization respected everyone else's roles. Right. So, um, you know, kind of back to that first person on the roster, last person on the practice squad. Um, the, the the top player on the roster respected and appreciated the value that the last person on the, on the practice squad brought to the table. They they appreciated what the front office did and, and what the ticket sales people were doing. So it, it was it started with everyone understanding their roles. But I think the underlying foundation was everyone in the organization appreciating and respecting the value and the contributions of everyone in, in the organization. It's a dream. That's incredible. Talk about a tribe of family mentality. Yep. Brandy in the comments, that's true dream work. Liana saying that we're on the same level. Right? We're on the same page. We're all aligned. We know where we're going. Mm -hmm. You have to do this. I'm going to do this. You got to do that. But we're all going that direction. That's powerful, Marcus. No doubt. We could talk football all day all with day. you because that is incredible. <laughs> Just tapping an athlete at the highest level, your brain, your mindset, powerful stuff. But what's maybe most impressive and most inspiring about your story, Marcus, is that you didn't just stop there. You didn't hang up the cleats and say, oh, I'm done. I can rest on my laurels. You know, I made some money. You took all of these learnings and then immediately began applying them into multiple spheres. So many. Business, <laughs> education, to name a few. Marcus Colson Enterprises, maybe we could turn it over to you. Talk to our audience a bit about what gets you fired up now and where you're looking to continue growing, applying this 1% better mindset, applying this I'm doing it for me attitude into the world today. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a really exciting time for me um, just because, as you guys said, I, I've done I've done I've worn a bunch of different hats, um, you know, post post football. Um, I've worn the investor hat, the advisor hat, the, the entrepreneur hat. And the thing that has really allowed me to step into all of these different um, industries and these different roles um, hasn't been that I've been an expert in, in sports technology or an expert in, in cannabis or any one of these industries that I walked in. 
Um, it's been this ability to be self-aware, understand what it is that I can bring to an organization or a situation and um, always look to continue to improve, right? So um, I'm really excited about being able to, to distill that process and that mindset out because quite frankly, it's the same process that allowed me to achieve at the highest levels in football. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about distilling that out and being able to um, offer that to, to other individuals that have, a, um, that have ambitious goals and, and really are growth, uh, growth oriented and you know, delivering that a, across a bunch of different uh, platforms, whether it be public speaking, um, executive coaching, or um, some of the education and curriculum that, that I've, um, I've started to develop. Um, so, so for me, it's, it's about helping others um, take, take that, their unique abilities and kind of harness those and, and propel them forward with the right mindset, um, again, to, to continue to be self-aware, to invest in themselves, and um, taking something that, that others may perceive as, as a weakness or, or kind of a chink in the armor, um, which, you know, for me, as a, as a former athlete, you kind of walk in the door and you're always a former athlete, right? So for a long time, that, that seemed like a, like a weakness or that seemed like a perceived weakness. Um, and I've been able to kind of flip that into a strength, um, just using different components of it. So, you know, helping other individuals figure out what that uniqueness is for them and be able to use it and apply it as a strength um, as they move forward and, and achieve their goals. It's Marcus, we, we've known you for a couple of years now. You've spoken at a Next Gen Summit event or two. We've seen you advising companies, investing, now doing work in education. And every single um, uh, opportunity that you touch, you're all in. You are an intentional guy. You're not dipping your toe in the water. I think high performance is like a bar that you say, regardless of what I'm going to do, I'm mm -hmm. going to bring it. We have a lot of performance junkies on our team. I see Andrew, Sam Ho in the comments. These guys were constantly trying to figure out what should we eat? How long should we meditate? <laughs> where should we work out? Can you walk us through? I mean, I'm obviously when you're in season versus now doing more in business, things change, but what are some of the routines that you have in your life that are non-negotiable for you to be able to perform at the highest level, whether it's business education or football, give us some of those routines, unpack it for us. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a holistic approach. It has to be um, because to be the best the best version of yourself in 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 business or in entrepreneurship, you got to physically, mentally, and emotionally be the best version of yourself. Um, you know, so for me, um, the 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 handful of non negotiables that I have is is um, number one, I, I need to spend time with my family. Um, I went for for a long time just kind of running and hustling and grinding. And um, pre-COVID, I had no idea how much I was running and hustling. Um, but you know, this ability to really slow down and see and and um, kind of have a bird's eye view, um, you know, family and and spending time with my wife and my children. I mean, that's that that gives me the balance. That gives me life, right? Um, so, kind of building everything else around that. So, um, obviously, you got to continue to stay fit. So, I work out four or five times a week. Um, doesn't look the same as, as when I was playing, but <laughs> build, build, build up a nice sweat and get a good lather going. Um, and then it's, it's just constantly figuring out ways to, to, um, to, to stay, stay present, stay mindful, um, whether it's, um, you know, a little bit of meditation and, and mindfulness training, um, always reading and listening to audio books. Um, it's just always about growth is, is figuring out, you know, how, how can I continue to challenge myself mentally? How can I continue to, to grow, um, develop new skill sets? And, you know, ultimately you, you never know where the next opportunity is going to come from. So, um, you keep training, like, you know, it's coming and when it does, you're ready. That. Marcus, that is incredible. I, I, Liana pulled out a quote, physically, emotionally, and spiritually become the best version of yourself. I think that's like my life goal. Yeah, that's, it, right? that's what we're that's chasing. It. it all comes here. back to that. One hundred percent, man. And you are someone who clearly draws a lot of inspiration. I love that you're talking about your family. Shout out mom and dad. I know my dad's watching. He's a big fan of yours. Talk to me about Marcus. One of these challenges that you mentioned in your career earlier on, you didn't maybe have the time to be as present, to be there for them. But how are you able to respond to this challenge and probably the few others? You're on the road half the year. You're not even home. What mm -hmm. is that like? And how do you now? 
let's say, re re-steer the course to make sure that is always going to be number one, no matter interviews, travel, business, et cetera? Yeah, I mean, th there's a couple of different ways I, I, I look at it. Um, one, it's, it's always with, with my family, it's always quality. Um, the time that I am there, sometimes I, I can't. Th there are times where I can't control having to be on the road. Um, so the time that I'm here and I'm present, I'm here and I'm present. Right. Um, there's no distractions. And, you know, we, we enjoy that time together and it's uninterrupted time. Um, you know, and, and the other way that, that I've I've actually been able to really leverage the, you know, this this kind of new world we're living in with, you know, homeschooling them half of the half of the, uh, the week. Um, I've actually started to to really get them integrated into uh, my business is in entrepreneurship. Um, so my, my son, um, you know, he's he's a huge uh, sports junkie um, already at age eight. Um, so I, I spent some time with him with the data and analytics company that, that I that I run. And, you know, he's super excited about that. And I just he's always talking about compete. And, and um, that's the name of the company. He's always talking about compete. And dad, are you working on compete? And how can I help you? And, um, so he's got his little, he's got his little internship with compete right now. And, um, my daughter, um, she's kind of starting her own little, her own little hustle, um, you know, selling essential oils and, and, and perfume. So, um, again, just, uh, just taking, taking the time to be intentional with them. Um, and, you know, being able to, um, show them some of the ropes of, of entrepreneurship. I mean, it's, it's something that, uh, I wish I was exposed to a little bit earlier in my life um, and, um, you know, just kind of getting them started early and really feeding their passion and feeding their curiosity um, is, is a way that, that you know, you're kind of staying engaged and, and always continuing to move forward and sharpen my own knife, um, but also giving them tools and resources that, that, I, that I didn't have growing up. Yeah, your, ki Incredible. your kids are, are going to be like something to reckon <laughs> with, I'm sure. Absolute beasts getting started at such a young age. Rachel's already like, we got to get them in the next gen community. Right. <laughs> well, I'm investing in their seed round, eight years old, Done. whatever it is. <laughs> totally resonating with this family piece because you don't have unlimited time, but you can dedicate the time that you do have to being present. Jayreen in the Philippines, family always, 100%. Uh, you know, challenges, if you could just be present, even if you have a quality over over that quantity, uh, Marquis, you, Marcus. You're you're like flooded with opportunities. Probably, I mean, you have so many <laughs> things that you could do. You have been pulled in a, a million different directions, and a lot of entrepreneurs we talk with, they say it's a similar problem. Our advisors are all the time like, Dylan, Justin, focus, guys, Blinders. focus already. You're like, want to do a million things. What's your mindset for evaluating all these different opportunities? Because you have next geners here saying they want to challenge you to to workouts and one on one. <laughs> so you have offers from fans all the time. You have businesses educate. Malachi's like, I'm challenging you in Madden to hit me up after. How do you think of, you have so much limited time to spend, you have family, business, education. How do you evaluate new opportunities as they come into your life? What are some of the things that you're looking for? Yeah, um, it's, it's for me, it's about setting priorities. Um, so I already established my family, they, they come first. Um, so, um, you know, the opportunities that I, that I choose to take on um, they kind of have to fit within the, the, the construct of, of the world that I built at this point. Um, you know, there was a time where I would take any and all comers, um, and there was some really good learning experiences, um, painful learning experiences at the same time. But, you know, as, as this thing has, has kind of evolved for me, it's, it's been about setting those priorities, kind of building the foundation and, you know, seeing where opportunities plug into the foundation. Um, you know, there, there's, I'm, I'm kind of moving past that point in my life where, you know, you know, trying to find a way to, to shave the corners off the square peg to fit it into the round hole. Um, you know, it, I, I'm, I'm past that point and, and feel really, really excited and, and um, uh, really, really focused on this, this education and, and executive coaching piece. Um, and, you know, there are going to be opportunities that fit into that. Um, and, you know, I kind of evaluate them as they come along. That's incredible. Sign me up. Yeah, I was about to say, we're, Sign we're, me count up. us in for one opportunity. I'm After in. family, we know at, but <laughs> one opportunity. We're getting in. I got to give a shout out to our mutual connection here. Kelvin Beecham who introduced guy. us a few years ago. Uh, I, I'll never forget on that panel, Next Gen Summit 2018, 
and Marcus Colston, Kelvin Beach, and that's it. Like you, yeah, you can stop <laughs> there. Paul Rabel was Paul there. Paul Rabel, yep. Brad Cameron, Porter, incredible lineup. Rebecca Greenwell, Rebecca WBA Greenwell. Was there. The theme was talking about uh, investing, right, and, and leveraging your platform to get excited about it and, and to add value to startup community members. And, and so many in our next gen community, they would love the opportunity to get to meet someone like you and bring you into their fold, bring you into their team, both mm -hmm. for the mindset coaching, but also for your learnings that you have taken in the limelight and, and through that process of getting to your stage, Marcus. So I want you to maybe tell us about one of your favorite investments that's getting you fired up today or a startup that you're working with or coaching that gets you really excited out of bed in the morning. Well, I'm, I'm going to go, um, this is going to sound a little, maybe a little off base and a little counterintuitive. Um, but the, the startup and the business that I'm most excited about investing all of my time and energy into <laughs> <laughs> is, is, is Marcus Colson Enterprises. Respect. Um, yes. you know, this is something that, you know, again, for a long time, I've, I've run, run hard, run fast, you know, kind of chasing after a bunch of different opportunities. And, um, I've always had things that I've wanted to accomplish kind of, and they've always taken a back seat. And what I'm, I'm really excited and, and motivated about right now is slowing everything else around me down and really investing in, into myself um, and building out this company in the way that, that I envision building it out. Um, because I know one of the things that, that has always driven me is, is helping entrepreneurs and, and, you know, being able to help people unlock that, that potential. And that's, that was part of what I, what I tried to bring to every investment, every advisory opportunity, um, every speaking engagement, that was part of, that was part of what you were getting, um, whether it was a, a check cut or not. Um, but I'm really excited about being able to, to really build that out and be intentional with that because I know at, as it gets built out and as it expands and grows, I'll be able to help more people. Um, so I'm, I'm really, really excited about um, just really honing in and, and investing in this platform that I'm building um, because I know good things are going to come from it. And it compounds. Amen. It compounds. You invest in yourself. You're better tomorrow. You're better tomorrow. You can have, help more people, reach more people. There was no right answer, yeah. but that was, that, the right was answer. The right answer. that was the right answer. Next Gen HQ is the medal for that yeah, answer. We but taken. He said it first. There was a technical glitch. You just didn't hear it. Second was MCE, first Next Gen <laughs> HQ. Marcus, you have a lot of opportunities coming to you, and a lot of people now with your growing platform are going to want to have a piece of you. Invest in my company, speak in my class. What are the traits of the entrepreneurs that you're looking for? How do you screen out? This is an entrepreneur I want to invest in. They have X, Y, Z mindset. And, or this is somebody who's clearly coming out from the wrong angle. I got to stay away. Just you know, keep my priorities focused. What are the traits or the flags that you look for? Because everybody's going to want a piece of your, your platform continues to expand. How are you screening that inbound? Um, you know, it, it's, it's, really, it's really hard, um, you know, just because – you know, there, there's, there's got to be. It, it's, it's hard to build a relationship on the surface, right? Um, but you know, the things that always stick out to me are, are, um, you know, kind of the why. You know, why? What, what is, what is your, your motivation behind doing this, right? Um, you know, there, there are entrepreneurs that, that are in it um, because of the things that they can, that they can get from it, um, monetarily and otherwise. Um, but there are other entrepreneurs that are truly driven by a passion um, to to um, empower others. And, you know, really um, the thing that always sticks out to me is is anything education based or anything that's democratizing access to to something that that others don't have. Um, you know, that type of motivation always um, stands out to me. And. You know, it's hard to get a feel for this, but, you know, is, is this person willing to to put in the work? Um, everybody, you know, kind of plans for success, but how can you plan for the failures? Um, how can you navigate those? And, you know, do you have the makeup to to turn those failures into learning experiences that catapult you forward? Um, you know, that nuance is a little bit harder to, to, to figure out on the front end. But, um, you know, when I find folks that have those two things, um, they're doing it for the right reasons. And, you know, they kind of have that grit factor where, where they're going to persevere and they're going to use the failures to, to, you know, propel them forward. Um, you know, you have those two things you can achieve at, at a really high level. 
That's incredible, Marcus. You, you mentioned education. That's where it has to start. We at Next Gen HQ, we're all about that. One of our core values is to never stop learning. Mm -hmm. And that's basically in your DNA, yeah. right? You are playing at the highest level in, in NFL. Then you're playing at the highest level in venture capital. Now you're getting the education space. We can't wait to see how you continue to grow. But it's already, I can't believe it's insane that we're coming to the end of our time, Marcus. So I wanna give you the floor before we let you go to uh, speak toward our next gen entrepreneur. Right? We have so many in the comments here, dozens commenting. They're, they've been dying for this interview to pick your brain. If you're gonna leave our early stage entrepreneurs, our 18 year olds, our 22 year olds, 24 year olds who are just getting started as you are in many ways, what's the piece of advice that Marcus Colston, NFL athlete, investor, entrepreneur, educator, what are you gonna look to them and, and say, I want you to focus on X, Y, Z to continue to build your own future? Um, I, I would really say, um, first and foremost, don't ever, don't ever sacrifice or don't ever compromise on investing in yourself. Um, you know, always find a, find a way and, and continue to be aware of, of who you are. Um, always, you know, lean into your passion and always continue to find ways to improve. Um, you know, that if you can lead with self-awareness, you, you're going to always find yourself in a position where, um, you may not always get exactly what it is that you want, but you'll know how to go find it. Um, and the other piece is that don't ever sell your experiences short. Um, you know, that's been part of this process for me, uh, just getting to this point is you know there there are a lot of different versions of success out there right now and especially with with social media um success pops up all around you at all times and um don't ever feel like you have to fit yourself into a box that isn't that isn't made for you um you know continue to to develop yourself to continue to to, to educate yourself develop skills and um you know, find ways to use those uniqueness, use your uniqueness combined with those skills um, to create value that, that other people can't create. You guys, you heard it here. Marcus is going to be on you. Invest in yourself. It's the number one asset CEO of and the life. best return. All right, Marcus, before we let you go, we're big NFL fans. We're in knockout. Who do you like this season? <laughs> Play your team. We can't have, no one's listening. It's just us. Who do you like? <laughs> What's going on? The Saints, what do you think here? Yeah, I mean, they they pulled out a win on on uh, Monday night, um, which was I think an important win. Um, but I, I will say that COVID has made this season crazy. <laughs> um, I, can't I can't even imagine. Yeah, this, I, I I can't imagine playing through something like this. So I think parity is always at a, at an all time high in the NFL. But I have no idea what's going to happen. You know. Come, come, you know, uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. I have no idea what the, the standards are going to look like. Everybody might be eight and eight. I don't know. <laughs> well, anything could happen this season. We'll get you back, Marcus. Yeah, yeah we'll bring you back. Thanksgiving, <laughs> put it in your calendar already. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll come back for an update. That'll work. Cool. Guys, Marcus, thank you so much for joining us on Live with Next Gen HQ for doing all that you can to educate, empower, and support entrepreneurs. Number one piece of advice from Marcus, invest in yourself. At, we're going to take that away all day and think about how we can continue to get Check the better comments, as well. Follow we're going to flag Marcus. He's doing some incredible work. Marcus, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. I appreciate, appreciate, appreciate you guys as always, man. Keep keep grinding. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. That guy's, a such beast. A <laughs> that guy's a beast. Such a that sign. guy's a beast. I mean, literally the highest level. Super Bowl champion. He's in the Saints the Hall of Fame. And he's not saying, here's what I've done. He's not saying, here. he's saying, Nope, I can get way better tomorrow. I can get way better tomorrow. And guess what? I can get way better tomorrow. If Marcus Colston, NFL, insanely superstar. accomplished superstar, legend, literally one of our favorite players of all, all time, time growing all up. All time. And if he's saying, I'm just getting started, and I'm going to tackle this industry, 100%. I'm going to work on myself every day. I'm getting out of bed fired up to keep being my best version of Marcus. How could we not, right? How could we not be investing everything every day? I'm fired up. Yeah. I'm ready. It's only and, 9.35. And he gave you the, the tips. He's saying, if you want to reach and work with a person like Marcus, here's what you need. you got to start with your why. We've all heard that, Franzi. You're in the comments. Jess, what's yes. going on? You're, you're, you know, you're a Saints wide receiver, the best of all time. This guy's a, a beast. So he said, start with your why, huge number one, and then you got to have that grit factor, step number two. If you have those two, at that point, you think about reaching out to a guy like Marcus. Before that, don't even get started. 
And it all comes down to our priorities, right? What is it for you? Is it family? Is it your company? Is it your workout, getting in the gym, right? If you're not honest with yourself, how are you going to be the CEO of your own life? Stop lying to everybody. Be aware. And that's cool. Whatever it is, we're fired up and so thankful they joined us. But I want to also yeah. thank American Express one more <laughs> time. If you enjoyed this, oh, I can't even imagine the hype that we're going to have next week on Tuesday. Shaq, Insane. Venus Williams, Next Gen HQ, American Express. Do we have to say more? Come you on. sign up for that event. It's free. And we're going to give somebody 500 bucks just for coming because we love supporting entrepreneurs that much. So we're make here. it happen. We're here. Thank you to American Express. Thank you to Marcus Colston. Thank you to the Next Gen fam. Let's go. Let's go. Let's have a great rest of our day. Let's keep building this momentum. We're going to leave you with a question. What's the one thing that can make this week a success for you? What is it? Write it down. You have a day and a half left here on the East Coast. You get two full days. You're out here on the West Coast. What are you going to do about it? Measure what matters and make it happen. Dylan, Justin, we're going to go run through walls. Mark is out here. We appreciate you for tuning in.